We, we, uh, we decided to close with a rock star. It's a great pleasure and uh, an honor to, uh, to introduce this last, uh, it's not, this last uh, discussion, uh, which will be between uh, Sindica Docolo and, uh, and Simon Jami. And I will just read very briefly about Sindica Docolo and why I refer to him as a rock star. Uh, Sindika, he's a young entrepreneur who has established the African Foundation of Contemporary Art, created in Luanda in 2004, and uh, with uh, the Congolese uh, artist uh, Fernando Alvim. Um, sorry, I have a mixed up in my papers here. Yes, sure. In the last yeah. four years, the Sindica do Colo Foundation has developed a responsible and conscious cultural policy, conceptualizing and producing cultural, economic, and political instruments and mechanisms for the development of contemporary African art. The creation of the Sindica do Colo African Collection of Contemporary Art, the support for the cultural movement in Luanda, the production of the first Luanda Triennial, and the design and execution of the first African pavilion at the 52nd Venice Biennial in uh, 2007, I think, uh, unprecedented cultural acts in the African and international context. And also, uh, Syndica is our main sponsor, main sponsor of this program that you all participated in over the past four years, and also the main sponsor of the of 154 and uh, I am very excited to uh, to attend this talk because it is not the talk about contemporary African art or a, co a collection of contemporary African art it's about an African collection of contemporary art please welcome Syndica and Simon Just basic housekeeping very quickly. Please put your phones off. No filming and uh, yeah, no phoning during the talk. Thank you. Well, Syndica, uh, Koyo just gave me the, the first question that I wanted to ask you. Uh, what is the difference between uh, African collection of contemporary art and a collection of Afri contemporary collection of African art? Thanks for asking, Simon. It is my Does pleasure. it work? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, Simon, you're supposed to help me, not to like ask me difficult questions. That one is very easy. Actually, yeah. Actually, no. Actually, it's, it's not. Wait it's not really true. No, no. Next. Koyo, we had a deal with Koyo when she invited me last year. I couldn't make it. She said, "Okay, you have to speak for one hour." And I said, "What do you want me to speak about?" And she said really whatever you want. And I say, are you sure you want me to do that? Are you sure that is going to work? I say, yeah, just, just talk about what, what, whatever it is that, that you do. And I thought maybe the best way for me to um, talk about what we have tried to do for the past now uh, a little bit more than 10 years, um, I would have to ask Simon to be there because he was uh, really at the, at the epicenter of, um, of my involvement and of the, my understanding of the reality of the work that needed to be done uh, in regards to the understanding, the celebration, the promotion of African creativity. And the second person who I wish um, had been there, it's very interesting because last time we were in Venice, there was this debate about um, um, Fernando Alving uh, being uh, white and he, being uh, black and he's European and Fernando is African, so Fernando didn't manage to get his visa on time. <laughs> so the white guy is not here. <laughs> but it would have been interesting because then the three sort of musketeers and my two, let's say, older brothers and mentors who have, we've been uh, having uh, fun the, with for the, the past 10 years. Brother, you're not that young anymore. Yeah, true. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 10 years ago I could say, now I'm an old guy like you guys. Um, but basically, it would have been fair and good and interesting for everyone, for uh, Fernando to be here, to be able to explain to you and a little bit what have been our interests, what has been our experience, our trajectory, 
and what we we have learned and what we're trying to um, um, to achieve. Basically, this question of African contemporary art has always been a problem to me and puzzled me. At some point, I was considering the possibility of ship shifting from collecting African art to collecting art of vertically challenged artists because it would have made more sense to collect art of artists that are below one meter sixty. The category of saying African art is um, is um, a bit problematic because it's not really solvable and it's not really the point anyway. It sort of confiscates uh, the debate. And I prefer generally to think in terms of um, Africanity, which is basically what interests me is the, um, is the contribution of our continent to the global aesthetics. So that includes a number, a number of aspects. And when we were in uh, Venice, we, did the, we had the chance to do the first uh, African pavilion of the history of the Venice Biennale. And the last for the moment. Yeah, but it was, but it was, it was really an amazing moment. Actually, it's one of my best memories. It was, um, well, it's, it's, it's never, it, well, it's never uh, pleasant to be sort of uh, attacked personally or to be put in question or to be insulted. But the thing that was so amazing that we were exactly, we were spot on the problems and the points that we were trying to make is that something is really rotten and doesn't work in the art world as far as African contribution, African creation is concerned. Um, and um, I think that was something that in this, in this aspect, I think one of the most important moments was this difficult and unpleasant moment at, um, at um, Venice. At, at, at Venice. And at that point, there were a number of questions that were raised. Why uh, did you put Andy Warhol? Why did you put Jean-Michel Basquiat? Why is Mikel Barcelo inaugurating the pavilion with you? We have so many good artists. It's an insult, etc., etc. And I said, look, it's, 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 um, it's, it's very simple. Well, Simon, of course, said that Andy Warhol was actually half black, but nobody knew it, and he was using like this makeup and stuff like that. But well, I, was, I thought it was an interesting approach. But um, the thing was, I said, well, first, this is my look as an African on the global aesthetics. What interests me is not if an artist is black or white or um, Arabic, uh, north, south, west, east, um, yesterday, today. What interests me is uh, something that is much more sensible and sensitive. Uh, it's like the sonority, it's like um, uh, the pace. You know, Afri Africa has to, be, has to be more than a passport and the existence of a visa in it or not. It, 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 we really have to um, put things, you know, really uh, back on the table, and go back uh, a few steps, a few steps back to redefine Africanity, to redefine the way we relate to our own culture, the way we look at our own history, and the way we look upon ourselves. So it was, it is, it's basically a very <coughs> political oh, and there's dynamic. Something, there's something significant that we we help people to understand because we, we've been educated in, in understanding the meaning of words that a pavilion is a space. It was not an African exhibition, it was a, an African pavilion. Absolutely. And a pavilion is a space. And if, uh, if we wouldn't give generously, not like they do in <coughs> Europe, passport to a lot of people in Africa, uh, the, the space that we call Africa would not be the same. So the pavilion was this kind of space of uh, generosity. So basically that was the idea behind, it's, 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 it's my subjective look, who I am, what I am, my sensibility, my trajectory. This is my look at, on, on, the, on, on, on the global aesthetics and on the art world. Um, that was something that was interesting because it helped me also to raise some specific aspects that actually are, in my opinion, the pillars and the added value of what we've done in the foundation. 
-hmm. which is identify certain, certain simple principles that seemed very subtle but are, that are so important. What, for instance, the question of this fundamental problem of today exposing Africa to its, um, creation, to its uh, contemporary creation. It is something that has um, more to do than um, just the Africans themselves, but it's really a question that uh, we have to challenge the art world with. Uh, I was discussing this a minute ago. There's um, uh, a German chap who's opening now a big uh, museum in uh, South Africa, in Cape Town, and I was asked, uh, do, you have a, do, you, do you have a problem with that? Do you think, had you, would you have wished for an African to do it instead? I said, no, 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 precisely. That's my point. It's, it's a moral question that confronts each and every one of us who, well, thinks that it's an important moment for Africa and who has something to do in art. It is important today. African contemporary art is not Egyptology. It is something that has a meaning that is useful and important for people and for a continent at a very strategic moment of its existence. We are at the turn of the century. We need to project ourselves. I don't know how many, how many African countries are doing this work right now to say, where are we going to be as a society, as a country, as a nation, as a continent in 100 years, in 200 years, in 300 years? And that is, these are important works that can be tackled through the angle of culture and art. And this is why for us, being stronger inside than outside was always our, 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 um, our objective. This is why all the pictures that you see behind, it's good because I can see the reflection up there. Yeah. So all the stuff that you're seeing behind is basically, that's us. So that's us. We do it in Rwanda, we do it in Angola, we do it in very different fields, in very different places, none of which is actually appropriate. It's always done with bits and pieces. It's always not organized enough. It's always at the, you know, really at the border. It's very, it's very, it's always a necessity. There's never enough money. There's never, but it's still very vibrant and it still exists and it's still a proposal to, um, uh, to the, African, the African audience. In this aspect, a lot of people ask about the collection and the collection is, is not really relevant. I mean, the collection at the end of the day is just a juxtaposition of object. Is, there's nothing more sterile, really. Um, the foundation is what makes the collection relevant. Uh, the, the projects, the artists, the exhibitions is what is fundamental and the collection is just the trace of these moments uh, uh, that have um, happened. So, Syndica, yeah. if I was the, the devil's advocate, I could ask you, uh, why not investing in schools, in roads, in hospitals? Why contemporary art? Well, quite frankly, well, it's not my job to do, make schools. Um, at my, at my, um, I mean, at, at my level, at my level, of course, there's the, well, there's the fact that I love art, but there's also the fact that I think that we urgently need to, um, as Africans, to understand that there are problems with the way we relate to our culture. And we, we're, not, we're not yet the center of gravity of our own thinking we are looking at the world and at ourselves through lenses. Um, thanks to um, our experience together in, in art and culture, I've realized that we're in a situation now, you know, looking at the experience and the trajectory of our generation of our fathers, they really had their fight and they, they had their heroic moments in fight, fighting for principles um, of, um, self-respect, demanding uh, consideration, fighting for their, their freedom um, and independence. And I realized actually that there's still a fight uh, that needs to take place. The only problem is that it's become, it's, it has become much more 
subtle and therefore it's not as easy you know, to sort of identify what the battlefield is. That's but in the culture and art, I really, I, I realize, for instance, this question of saying that um, the problem of Africa is the African elites is probably the most manipulative and disgusting expression of racism I've, I've ever heard in my life. This is something I stand very strongly against and I do not accept, I, uh, I do not ever react with any weakness um, in, in this thing. I strongly believe, and this is personal belief, that uh, too, many people, too many countries in Africa, uh, they're, they're misunderstanding exactly what is going on and what is at stake and the world we live in. Like I, I tell my children always, this is the world out there is not, it's not happy camping, it's, it's a race. We need to have our strategies, we need to have our individualities, we need to think by ourselves, we need to have our game plans, we need to be you know, ambitious and we need to be aggressive. We have to really stand for who we are. And to this day, I think there's still a big work that needs to be done. I really hope that the younger generation will be morally, personally, mentally, and emotionally much stronger than we are today. So in this regards, I think the work that we have done, this, is, this was at Arsenale when we got there, um, there was nothing. And this was what happened after. I hope all this will help to strengthen, to strengthen them so that, you know, they're, they're, they're just um, people who are more prepared, more open, more sensitive uh, there's, there's than we had a chance to be. There's something syndicate that's always coming back in your, in your speeches. Uh, first of all, uh, Africa is probably the only continent to be considered as a country. Uh, the, 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 the Brits always say that France would be wonderful if they would not be the French, but uh, it's an old story between the Brits and the French. When you have the feeling that everybody <laughs> agrees on, uh, on, on, on the continent, except the African, of course, is it why you're always assimilating whatever is done through the foundation as a political act? <sighs> I don't know, sometimes, and I was wondering before, before coming and, and doing this talk, if I should avoid making, like, creating, transforming this stage into a political stage, because really what people are interested in is more, is more the arts and how do we collect and, and are we going to make a museum and where does your money come from and how much does it cost and how many pieces do you have and who's the biggest collector in the world and et cetera, et cetera. So, but, Quite frankly, the only thing I can, I, can, I can tell you and the only thing that is relevant that I can give you is basically how I feel because this is, what is the, the collection and the foundation, what we do and all its imperfections is just really a, 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 reflesh, a reflection of, 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 of who I am. But just to talk a little bit about the arts, looking at Africanity and not at African art scene, has enabled something that is very, um, very interesting and good and strong for me, is that I, I realized that actually we, we are at the, at the verge of a sort of an African renaissance. I couldn't find a better word because I, I know it means something for the American art, but when I say an African, an African renaissance, I mean the literal term, to, uh, term of renaissance. Actually, uh, Renaissance historically has, uh, has started in the mid-15th century when um, Constantinople fell to the hand of the Turks. What had happened is that during the, 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 the Middle Age, so Europe has sort of separated itself from Constantinople, uh, Byzance, the <coughs> Roman Empire, so the, West, the uh, Eastern Roman Empire that kept the, third, the heritage. You, you could see the third guy, Fernando, in the, the last picture. Yeah. Well. So basically, the heritage, all the heritage, the, philos the of the of the antiqui antiquity philosophers, Greek philosopher, Platon, Aristocrat, etc. Uh, basically, everything was kept sort of in Byzance. They were the the holders of this heritage, and when Byzance fell to the Turks. All these, uh, all these great philosophers and artists, etc., fled to Western Europe, and uh, the situation in Western Europe there was sort of a clash from which 
an amazing light image, which was Renaissance. Basically, what they were saying in the book that I was reading was that modern, modernity is the, re the result of three things. One is a taste for change. Two is the presence of strong individualities. And three is a taste for, uh, for debate, so for contradictory uh, debate. And they were saying that antiquity had two of those, but antiquity didn't like change, you know, like the biblical times. So they had like, great philosophers who enjoyed critical debate, you know, like the, 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 the uh, Greek, philosophers, Greek, Greek philosophers, and they had great individualities, but they lacked this taste for change. Uh, the uh, Middle Age had uh, two as well, which was they had uh, great individualities, and uh, they, uh, uh, they had um, uh, also a taste for change, because there's a lot of great inventions that took place at that time, I but they no didn't debate. have a big taste for contradictory uh, uh, debate. Uh, debate, thanks to the, the, the church. Um, and what happened for the first time in history, in Renaissance, is actually the three were gathered because of the resurgence of the Greek, the Greek um, uh, critical um, way of, of, of thinking. And the result of that was this incredible explosion in richness. And I, I really think that maybe this is what ahead of us as far as African art is concerned. Now what is missing? according to the three canons? Well, that is my problem. I haven't figured it out yet. But one thing that is missing for sure is that we have to dig deeper and understand and sort of do the dissection of exactly what this Africanity means. So this is why I'm always interested in, in, in Simon's curatorial projects with everything that has to do with, with working around that, exploring that. This is why I started collecting this contemporary um, African art and I've had really obsessions. Uh, Eve, who's here, <coughs> Eve Terron, very good friend, please stand up, Eve, so that everybody sees you, stand up, stand up. Eve is a very good friend forever, fantastic person, and um, she has an amazing taste and sensitivity, and she has helped me put together an African-American collection that I did, never talked about, but I was doing al almost an, an hiding sort of, and the moment uh, Simon found, found out about it, um, he started introducing in all the projects, the curatorial projects, and inviting some American, African-American artists to Luanda for the Trinidad and make ex exchanges with, uh, with uh, our artists. More recently, I think that's two or three years ago, I started to collect, but really in a, in a sort of sick, exceptional way, uh, classical African art, which is uh, tribal art or primitive art. I don't know how racist word there exists to qualify the, the, the word like, obsession so is quite correct. Class, classical art. I was, trying, I was being classical interviewed uh, 30 absolutely. minutes ago, and I showed my phone. I, I mean, uh, I have probably 3,000 pictures of it. But the thing is, it, 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 it is so important and vibrant. One thing that was really very interesting is that I, I, I was reading yesterday a book about the Fang sculpture. Fang is one of the sexiest thing that ever, ever made by man. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the gardiens de reliquaire that are, that, are, that are sweating. I'll tell you a little bit more about this because you, now you got me started on classical African art. But just, just to share with you one thing that, I, that was written in that book about the, the, the Fang statuary was um, a quote by, by Pablo Picasso. And it's written in French, but I'll try to translate as, as well as possible. And he said, my greatest artistic emotions, I have felt them when were suddenly revealed to me the sublime, the sublime beauty of these uh, sculptures executed by African anonymous artists. These masterpieces of a passionate religiousness and rigorous logic are what human imagination has produced that is the most powerful and the most beautiful. That's Pablo Picasso. And then I thought to myself, I went to the Met Museum 
to the Metropolitan Museum in New York a few months ago. And I saw some of the pieces that to me are, I mean, just the ultimate, like the, the Fang head, you know, the Bieri head of uh, Jacob Epstein and pieces like that. And they're all exhibited in a room that is probably the size of this room here. And the cube, I don't know who's the moron who curated this room. <laughs> they try to put behind some Ella Natsui and some, you know, sort of South African artists and stuff like that. And I thought this is, I mean, this is the problem. We have a problem. I have, we have to do something about it because that, that is not acceptable. And, and I went afterwards to the Tervuren Museum. I'm Congolese. The Tervuren Museum has the, has, the, has the sculpture of Leopold II in the middle of the museum. And it's a colonial museum. Imagine tomorrow in Israel, like a statue of Hitler in the middle of, in the middle of a museum. It is as outrageous. And I've been telling my kids about this thing of Tintin in the Congo, which is nothing less than, than, than the German version of Mein Kampf for kids. And I, and, but, I, but I'm saying today, these problems are subtle, but they are real. And I cannot tell the guys at the, at the, at the Metropolitan Museum, oh, the bad thing, because it's not their job, it's a trophy. They went and they stole this, this stuff to people who didn't realize the value of it, and now they're keeping it. It's exactly, I was asked the, the question about this thing. I, I took my kids to the, um, to, to the, to the new uh, Acropo Acropolis Museum mm -hmm. in, uh, in Greece, and it was, it was so funny because you have all the, in frieze, I don't know how you call it in English, like, like you know, all the, the thing that goes around the, the whole, uh, and it was, and, and, there was a guy who used to be the council or the, or the governor or something of, of, of Greece, a British guy or an ambassador, and he literally had some guys in the middle of in, every night that would take like some stone and some stuff. And it's here in London now, and the guys, the, 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 the Greeks are so desperate because they want to get it back, but for some reason they have the coolest Greek uh, 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 museum anywhere in the world, but the, the British won't give it back. So uh, they have, they put like some white plaster everywhere and representing the same thing so that every Greek kid who would go there would understand that they, their, their, um, History. Uh, their, respons their sacred responsibility would be to wage war against Britain until they bring this thing back. Well, of course, it's going to be maybe a press war, but it, they have this consciousness. And what I was thinking was basically that it would be so important to always make sure that we're relevant in what we do. We're only relevant in what we do when we confront ourselves to, sorry, to this shit. And <laughs> so this is why I'm, I always make sure that Simon and Alvin um, never forget to never be too far away from shit. You know, it always has to be smelly. We know we want to make sure that we're, you know, we're 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 spot on. We're there. Sorry, I'm being a, a, a little bit friendly with you guys, but I thought we might as well be. I think that the best way to fight shit, as you say, is to produce beauty. Yeah, true. And uh, true. to be conscious of shit, but to give it as far as yourself. I mean, it's about being conscious of things. It's not about having it on your nose, because you couldn't feel the flowers anymore. Yeah, Simon is very right about that. He corrects me all the time. He's very right. He told me, you know, stop, don't obsess yourself, but, you know, just because you're upset, don't focus on that, you know, just be, just produce, just, let's produce, let's do, instead of, instead of, instead of denouncing it. This is why I avoid to give too many interviews and do this stuff because, because basically I'm, 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 I'm the nervous guy and he's the you know, the, the wise guy. So, uh, but, but still, there was Stop one, one very... Um, let's go back to... <laughs> let's, let's talk about now nice projects because you've seen cool, um, cool stuff there where we had the chance to be exhibited. We have the project to expose the African audience to its creation, so of course you need a venue for that. And there's this question of the museum. And because we said that it was logical for us to try to, 
to try to come up with a project like that, that that would be the, the, the point of what we're doing, to have a, a museum of contemporary art in, in Luanda. Everybody's asking me every other day, so how is the museum, when is the museum opening, etc., etc. It is a little bit difficult for me because um, I personally think that museums today in the way they work, but that's globally, they're a little bit dated. It's, it's a little bit like the, like the Catholic Church, you know? It, they, they're good stuff, but it doesn't really, it's not really adapted to how fast the world has changed. And it's a little bit the same for museums, you know? It's a muse I see the museum very often as a church, so really the believers, the guy who, you know, they were taught at home, like all the prayers and stuff, they go there every Sunday. But the rest, you know, they're not really, they're not really invited, you know, they haven't been chosen. And I think that is something that really needs some serious reflection. And maybe because we're in a particularly sensitive point for us being involved on in the African scene with all the, with all the problems that I just described, Maybe the solution would come from us because we're, we're going to have to think of how do we expose the African audience to Africanity? And how do we make sure that we're actually, we actually touch them? The message gets across and they're exposed to that beauty. Um, and that basically forces you to rethink how does a museum work? And, I, and I've challenged Simon. Simon has, uh, Simon has done, has done, I think, he's just inaugurated. Yesterday he was in Savannah, so he's a bit tired. But Simon in Savannah, Georgia, uh, he, he produced a show that is ongoing now. I think it'll be in Washington afterwards and it will come back to Europe. It was in Frankfurt. And it's called The Divine Comedy. Um, I think, personally, is one of the it's his heritage. I mean, he's a, he's a brother to me, and, um, and I told him I'd like to buy the collection, the whole show. And he said, hey, sure, you don't want to buy like one piece? I said, no, because the thing is, it's, it's hell, the purgatory, and paradise. And the whole show is just an installation. You know, you cannot take one piece. It's, 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 it doesn't make sense. The thing has to stay as a whole, and I think it, it, I, I know the guy, and I know the amount of himself that this has required as a moment that was, at a moment that was not easy for him. But this is why I really wanted to keep it as a whole. And I told, I told Simon, okay, let's try to do it. It's not done yet, but, but at least the artists who have works there, now they know that I'm actually trying to get it, and why I'm trying to get it, and keep it as a whole, and show it as a whole. Uh, but what I've challenged Simon with. I said, as soon as we're, we're, you're done with this project and we're done with that, what I would like you to do is try to do something which would be define a curatorial project that would be really about Africanity. So let's mix, let's get rid of the idea of time. African classical art, uh, uh, classical art African contemporary art, and we do one show where it works perfectly. But you have to be super smart to, to pull that off because some people have tried and basically they either it's by region or it's uh, or this is sculpture and this is uh, sort of painting and this is sort of perf performance. Oh, and it's, it's, it, but it's, yes, and it's not pertinent, it doesn't work. The thing you have to do, and this is why I think Simon is the only guy I know who could actually pull it off, is you have to find a, th a thread that is intellectually much more pertinent, which would be maybe the sonority of it, or the pace, or the rhythm, or the, or the, or the heat, or you have to find some kind of stuff that would help you to, um, that would enable you to put all these works together that would have the coherence and that would have the beauty and the strength. Uh, and that has never been done before. So I told him, what I would like is for you to try to nail that and to work. It might take more than a year, it might take the time that it'll take. But what I'd really like is if you manage to nail it, I would like the museum to be like that. I would like the museum to be a celebration of Africanity and then it would be um, 
a proposal or it would be a witness of wit what we've tried to achieve during, uh, during, a, during a, all, a, all these years. A statement. It's always important to make statements. Uh, and I know how it's going to work, but uh, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Uh, no, but uh, Seneca, there's, there's a thing where we're talking. Uh, I've been um, insisting on, on, on time, on music, or rhythm, on, uh, on poetry, on uh, different things. And for instance, there's, um, there's something that uh, the, the one that Giannale is doing, and that impulsion of, of Fernando, is that, that, that there was an invention. We're living in a uh, lot of invention, European inventions. And one day they separated the different form of arts into six, now they added film. When at the beginning, I remember a, a, a movie I wrote one day, it was called Aristotle's Plot, where I was explaining to the audience that uh, cinema, film, has been invented, invented in Africa 2,000 years before Jesus Christ. And I was just taking as an example the, the, what the European decided to call the rituals. And you look at the ritual, you have costumes, you have a script, you have a director, you have music, you have everything in one product. When European uh, taught us that painting is painting, sculpture is sculpture, when everything in fact is a, is a totality. So there's a lot we we can teach with those, those new projects. So that's going to be a, um, a, a great project, but, but, but it'll, take, it'll take some time. In the meantime, we're going to have, we, we have one thing that we really insisted on and being one of the moral, moral pillars of, of the foundation is reciprocity. Uh, we strongly believe that it's important to create the necessary dynamics to put Africa physically back into the circuits of the of the art world. So basically what we do is with the interest that is generated by the critical mass that the collection and the foundation has reached, we we are we have there's a lot of institutions that are interested and that say, well we'd like to organize a show of your work. Um, the only thing we ask because we don't accept money from from any institution, but so we organize you know, we make the pieces available and we fly the artists and everything. But what we ask in counterpart is that whichever museum or institution that is, that is uh, organizing the show, uh, organize the same show in Africa, wherever they want, where, whether on a basketball field in, in Mogadishu or whether on a center of contemporary art in Johannesburg, I don't mind, but just as a principle so that we start understanding that you have to be you have to be polite, you know, you have to be responsible, you have to be good, you have to be polite. So you come, you, can, you have access, you know, it's, it's open bar, please. But you also have to understand that you have a role to play in, uh, in, in, in this situation. So that is something that has been um, um, very interesting because we realized that with a lot of the interlocutors that we've had, uh, they actually started to look at us in a, in a different way, to look at what we do as, as something actually worth sharing. For instance, a lot of stuff that we do during the Triennial, I think we live art in a, little, in a different way. Because Angola is a country that has been really torn by war for, for so many, so, so many de decades, and it's such an unfair and, and, and dirty and deceitful way. Um, the way we do things is sort of, has been quite involuntarily uh, pioneering in, cert in certain aspects. For instance, we, um, we try to organize in the, in the Triennale, um, we want the art to be in the street and to go towards people. So we did all these, um, these shows, um, uh, okay. Robert Hutter is, the, is here, Ingrid, Ingrid, his wife, and his alter ego artist uh, was exhibited in Luanda with this performance that she does with her hair. And it was on an outboard. 
and uh, so we used we used the outdoors in the city for publicity. We used it to put art everywhere and art in the street. And the thing that is maybe the particularity of Rwanda is the traffic jams. I think people spend more time in the traffic jams than, than really in the office. So basically, it was a, a, an interesting way of having art sort of makes its makes its way into people's eyes and people's mind, and people was used used to it and th thought. It was very interesting because after a while, we realized that these kids from that generation were a natural result of that. They absorbed it in such a way that was amazing. I realized, for instance, I, I remember, for instance, one experience that was me, was me, for me, was absolutely a, a, a revelation. It was um, we organized the first exhibition as a pre-project of the first Triennale in Luanda. And it was in a sort of a small, in a, it was in the middle of the time, the town, the old town, and it was in the sort of a small um, uh, warehouse. And I was talking, uh, that's, me, that's Mikel Barcelo, when we went, that is so cool, in the desert. He said, he said I'm coming to Angola, the first Triennale. One condition, you take me to the desert. I said, come on, man, I've never set foot in the desert. It was war like three years ago. What, what are you talking about? And then we it's went, it was the it's most it's amazing it's thing. We're thinking of doing it. Like one of the politeness yeah. is going to be to wrap it up so that uh, I'm sure a lot of people are dying I'm, I'm to, just going to finish with, 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 yeah, with, yeah, with this I'm, thing. I'm, so I'm just I'm finishing I'm with this thing because finish. it has to do with one guy here. So we were, we were, we were, we were putting this show together and I was, asking, I was asking Fernando, I said, are you sure we're not a little bit too edgy? There was this uh, thing that I wanted, I really wanted to show it, but I didn't want, really want to shock people because this would have like confiscated mm -hmm. the whole debate, was um, a work by Kendall Gears, which is like a, a sort of a Christ on its cross. And it has this sort of, um, with, with <coughs> black tar that does a, a produce kind of a, the shape of a vagina like that around the cross. With with in gut wet rust and stuff like that, so it's a heavy thing, but, but aesthetically really beautiful but strong, and I thought, wow, isn't that a bit you know excessive? Because the point is not to shock people, you know, it has to be something that we share with people. And for us, you know, do it. And then we went we went to see one of the most beautiful moments I've ever had of communion around the art was uh, thanks to this. To, to this guy, Nastio Mosquito. Please stand up, Nastio, so everybody sees you. Sorry, sorry about that, but at least you know who we're talking about. He's one of the coolest, he's one of the coolest and sexiest um, um, performers on the, around, I was saying on the continent, but around, I, I haven't seen that many performers, but what I have seen with him is, is just incredible. And we were in Luanda and it was, I think we had a problem with, with electricity, as it often happens, you might say, but so there was just sort of candle lights. There was this, a, a room like that, and he was there, and there in the back was a huge photograph of a poetess, Aldalara, <coughs> Aldalara, and and I don't know how many lipsticks you use to to sort of paint her her mouth with red lipstick like that, and some and, whiskey shots. Yeah, and he was and he was sitting there as he always does, and very cool and offered some whiskey shots to everyone. And people were there with their kids and there were artists and people from you really know, wherever. And I thought, wow, that's gonna be a weird moment. These people are gonna think we're, we're not serious. You know, that it's, it's edgy. I mean, you have to be introduced. You, you have to understand. And he started, it was so poetic. And the whole text, and it lasted, I don't know, 30 minutes maybe? I don't know, because time sort of suspended itself at some point. So at, at some, at, as he was going along, <coughs> He was starting to sort of make love to the picture of Aldalara and, and cover his face with the red lipstick. And the red lipstick was like going, aesthetically, it was, it was really the bomb. It was really as good as, as good as it gets. And the most amazing thing is, personally, I was completely, I mean, under the charm. And at some point I realized, and I looked at the audience, I said, but how are the others reacting? And I realized, actually, there was interaction that I have never seen anywhere in the world. And the guys was saying, yeah, yeah, go ahead, man, yeah, yeah. And there was like interaction in, 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 in the room. And it was, it, it was like a religious, it was like a religious <coughs> thing. And then I realized, I said, yeah, but it makes sense because at the end of the day, the art of performance has very much to do with 
where we come from and, and this classical African art that we're talking about, this is really something that was ours, that was our way of, of, of expression. So it's not one media, it's sort of one moment. So it's the total artist, like I was saying yesterday when I was uh, intru in introducing Kezaya Jones, what, what was interesting for me is, is not about the music, it's about the whole performance and the, and the proposal and this moment that you're creating and that you're sharing that is just pure and sheer magic. And that is the energy that when I collect and when I do projects, this is the energy that interests me. And the moment I lose that, I mean, I, pff, there's no point. You just take the thing, put it in a museum, just ask me how much money it costs it and how many pieces I have to see if I'm bigger than Johnny Pigotti or whatever, you know, because then it loses the, it lo we lose the whole point oh, in the low. On, on that note. So that, uh, that was my wrapping it up. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're worth. Well, worse, worse than Abdullah Konyati, I mean, I, I'm old enough to know that when somebody starts by saying, I don't like to talk, this is why Abdullah is saying, <laughs> beware. So now, the floor, you have the floor, but you don't have a mic. I have a mic, and I have one question. I'm Koyo. Uh, thank you, Syndica. Last year, when we were talking, we talked a lot about, uh, you know, um, your influence or the influence that you could have on other uh, entrepreneurs or people who could be interested or, I mean, not could be, who, who have the means to invest into art. I actually wanted to ask you, uh, is it something you are, uh, you know, actively doing? And are you succeeding in that? Because when you when you talk about uh, you mentioned that the the phrase saying that uh, uh, the African elite the problem of Africa is its elite but um, in the context of nurturing the art promoting the art supporting it uh, preserving it uh, that statement is clearly true because people like you are absolutely rare. Uh, on the continent or even outside of the continent. So I, I want to find out from you if you can share that. Uh, what are you doing to encourage, not just by you know, the, the wonderful example of, your, uh, of what uh, your foundation, uh, foundation has done and is continued doing, how are you getting your fellows sort of into, up to speed? So to speak. Yeah, uh, clearly, clearly, in, 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 in this, I haven't been, I haven't been successful. It's really, it's really something that, that is 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 not good. I was, um, I was discussing yesterday with with Yinka Shanibari. Uh, something that moved me very deeply. That uh, Yinka is is at the top. You have a few guys like Chris Ophili, him, uh, who are you know, globally celebrated and respected for their work. And he was telling me, look, Syndica, thank you so much. I'm, I'm, happy, I'm happy to be here with you and discussing this, especially for me, because you know that you're the only African collector that has my work and that's interested in my work. And he was so, so sad uh, um, um, when, when saying it. I didn't know what to answer and I said, look, well, I, f I find a way. I say, okay, but the work that I have from you is the m one of the most iconic works in my collection. It's everywhere. How to shoot two heads at the same time, I think, is one of the first pictures that you see of the collection if you Google it. And it's pretty much everywhere. E any relevant um, 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 things that we've done with the foundation, with the collection, it's been there. Uh, but clearly, I have, I have no answer. I think maybe, well, the example maybe you know, showing, for instance, I talk to a lot of my friends, I have friends, you know, Nigerian friends, I tell them about the, you know, Ife heads, they're completely illegal, they're still traded, they buy them, man, come on, buy them, you can have one, you're Nigerian, you know, it doesn't have, you don't even give it back to the museum, just have it, it's so cool, have Yoruba, there's a Yoruba for sale, by the way, if there are any rich Nigerian in the, in, in, in the house. It, it's going to be really the, the, the top of the top of the top. Like the, there's, a, there's the Somali beiges, but the really cool Yoruba sort of um, um, 
I don't know how you, I don't remember how you call it in Yoruba. It's gonna go for sale at Sotheby's in New York. So if 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 you want to buy it, you know, go ahead. You should do it. But I think one of the stuff that I try to encourage my friends to do, or the guys that I see that have the means to do, is to start with the auctions. And you can see I was speaking with Wangeshi yesterday, and she was telling me she's not very comfortable with this thing of, of auctions. And I said, it, 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 it's very important. There are very few African artists. There's her, there's Chris Ophili, there's uh, Gada Amer, there's, there's, there's few guys who are actually out there, Sotheby's, Christie's, etc., etc. And that's, that's a good, that's a good way um, that's a good way to start. Nevertheless, um, I think it's true. We should create this, um, this crisis of consciousness and so that they understand that it's not only decorative items. You would be amazed to know that you have some African, uh, we African collectors that have Damien Hirst, that have Jeff, Jeff Koons, that have stuff like that, because it's, it's more of a social statement. So maybe this is what we have to change. It has oh, to start being cool to collect. The Diamond Sun were funding the Tate Modern here, so, see. Yeah, well, it's, it's true. I'm, no, but I'm, I have no, no, no judgment on, on that, because I, I, I don't know. But the, the thing is, um, I, think it is, I, I think it is something we have to raise, but fundamentally you're doing much more work in that field than I am. It's clear that any sustainable artistic African scene will only work if it has a solid pillar, which is a market pillar. And that is something that really, that really I mean, I, I have to really give you guys um, well, my support and, 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 and really congratulate you on what you guys are doing, uh, Koyo, Turia and, and, and your team. There's two things that I like about the project here of 154. First, first is the fact that it faces the, the question about the market. I mean, I cannot, it doesn't make sense if as an individual, the only reason for the survival of what I do is because I have enough money to start buying and some artists I'm buying so much from them, from them that they actually can continue to work because there's no sustainability. The only way to make it work is to make it into a system and that is defining the relationship between the, 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 the product, sorry, the product, the artwork and the artists and, and the demand, the offer, the demand, and you need to like they make the architecture of that so that the creation is be the best, best possibly uh, uh, served. Now, um, I, I, I was challenged by Toria to make the 154 in Africa, and and quite clearly, I mean, we haven't really defined the contours, but I, I think this is something worth fighting for. I'm sure it's going to cost me a, 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 a ton of money, but, but I mean, the point is we have to start being responsible. It cannot be some, just some posture, some attitude and some speech. We have at some point to create the market. The thing that we have that is good in Angola, that we have rich people. So, so that is cool. We have a lot of poor people, there are too many, but our strategy is not to make everyone poor is to Say try to make more rich people. I think that's the right approach. There are two stones in there and you're talking about rich people in Angola. Uh, I've met one, I'm not going to state any name. It was really interesting why he wanted to become a collector. He had a couple of magazines with your name on them. He was asking me, how does one become a collector? And I asked him, why do you want to become a collector? Because I want my name on those magazines. Yeah, that's <laughs> <it>. <laughs> but I mean, maybe his sons, etc. What is important is to make uh, the, the, the market go. Uh, I'm not convinced on uh, opening a, a, an art fair in Africa right now. There's one in South Africa. But uh, we need the market before we create uh, the, the not fair. Not in Africa. What I'm saying is specifically in Angola, because I think, I think there will be, there is a demand, there, there is a market for it, and I think, um, I think it, it, it would be very good to give the opportunity to uh, people to start buy art. And, no, and, 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 and the hype and, can be created. 
Well, we'll try. Request. There'll be a lot of imperfections, of course, but we'll, tr we'll, we'll try. So basically, Toria, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it afterwards. Other questions? Oh, you still don't have a mic. My name is D.Y. Goy. I'm a blogger. I have a question. Talking about the uh, precedence to uh, an African platform, I was just wondering, I have a simple question. Uh, how much the Foire Internationale de Kinshasa from the 1780s, the Fikin, was an influence to what you're doing uh, through the flaws and the good things? That was just my simple question. To, for the Fikin? The, the yeah, was, it, was it ever an influence to, uh, or when you, uh, we were trying to improve that model, or, or are there any good Actually, things the that came is, out uh, from uh, the Fikin? Yeah, uh, thanks for your question. Actually, the, the Fikin, which is the Foire Internationale International de Kinshasa, is it was uh, like a lot of uh, projects in former Zaire. Was the, the the idea was really it was really nice. It was really great. But the problem is that is, is in the way the project was then executed and carried through, didn't really have the sustainability and was almost bankrupt during the. So it was really, um, it, w it was really, um, it really didn't happen. And unfortunately, I was, I was, um, I discovered the Fikin. Uh, at too late a stage, where it was only a sort of a, 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 a fair, you know, children would go and people would go for a drink and have fun and listen to music and stuff like that. And, and I, wasn't, I was never exposed to the initial uh, project. Nevertheless, it's interesting that you mention it because when I flew in from, from Rwanda yesterday, the, the day before yesterday, I flew in with the guy who's responsible for <laughs> Filda. Filda is a little bit the, 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 the counterpart, the Angolan counterpart of Fikin. And it's funny because in many ways Angola is, looks a lot like Zaire of the 70s. It has the same drive. It's a little bit at the same moment of its history. And I, 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 I spoke to him in Filda about doing something uh, with art and they're very, they're very dynamic. So I think that would definitely be, if we discuss with Turia the possibility of doing 154, I think we would probably do it through there. I've always been personally very interested to have another model and another approach, which is the approach, the approach of the auctions. There's something really um, very special about being in an auction. You have a special relationship <coughs> with uh, your, your own, um, how do you say, covetness? You know, when you covet something, you see it and you start desiring it and you want it and then you sort of, it's very selfish and it's very thing, but it's a, it's a, a very true feeling and I think it's a very efficient starting point, you know, to create this kind of, 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 uh, of destinies of, of, of collectors. Uh, and I thought the idea of, of associating, like, you know, I'm, I'm going to fight for it, I'm going to buy it, I want it, why do I want it? This also, also puts in perspective all the right questions. Now we have to work on the politic of desire. But when the boss, I'm talking about Koyo, comes that close to the stage, it means that we have one last question. <laughs> There's one last question. Yeah, I can't miss my flight. Yeah, maybe one last question. Okay. Hi, this is a question for both of you. I was just wondering how you felt about the growing space, the growing importance that the market is taking place, the growing international attention that it's getting, when there's still so much work to be done in terms of developing an infrastructure for producing contemporary art, exhibiting contemporary art across the continent, and also so much work to be done in terms of developing a critical discourse around the production of contemporary art across the continent. Well, you're making a very valid point, but I think if you want to move forward, there is no uh, a perfect, a perfect formula. We don't have like an equation where you say, okay, there it is, you know, just uh, implement this and, and, and the problem is solved. So I think what we need to focus on is whenever you have like a, a, a project, like a surge of, of, a, of a good energy and a good idea, you just um, give it as, as, as much um, air to breathe and to grow uh, and to take off uh, as possible. So because I was confronted, I was, I was re I'm, I'm really happy because uh, Koyo, Turia are, are strong empowered women, uh, African women, I, I believe very much in that. And what they've managed to put together really, really surprised me. When I was invited for the first 
for the first fair, and unfortunately I couldn't make it, and I apologize again, uh, but, but I was wondering <coughs> how professionally are they going to manage to, to, to do it? Is it going to be one more thing when people, where people would have to be sort of flexible and understanding because it's done by Africans, so it's like we tried, we did our best, you know? And that I, re I, I wasn't too happy about that idea. But the way it's been done, and, and it's professional, it's, 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 it's square, it, it makes sense. I haven't spoken to, um, to, the, to the gallerists, but from what I can see in the press and the echoes that I'm getting from it, I think it will be an investment for them that will make sense. So it is a system that works. So when I'm confronted to a system that works, I don't look at the fact that it doesn't solve my whole equation. I just know that I'm in the presence of something that needs to be promoted and that needs to be cherished and secured. So basically, it is true that it's important to raise this thing by saying, guys, we're going to become much bigger here, but the rest is going to become disproportionate because at the end of the day, we're going to be stronger at selling than at showing and sharing or then at producing but quite frankly I'd rather be in that situation than having a perfectly symmetric <laughs> ridiculously <laughs> minuscule uh, uh, nucleus so we have to start somewhere and I'm sure that I believe that this is you're setting an example by the way you're doing it and you're doing it right whether it was African or Japanese or anything this thing is square and it works so basically, I think this will be a very good example and inspiration in these fields for other people who would like to write history to do it with the same level of rigor and, and ambition. And to follow on that, uh, better, better something high than everything equally flat, uh, because there's a kind of an inspiration, the one inspire the other, because there are things that are very visible, but there are things that are very underground. I mean, uh, Koyo in, uh, in Dakar is working on the educational, he's making programs to create a critical discourse. Uh, BC is doing the same uh, in, uh, in, in Lagos. There's a lot of initiative like that. And, uh, the, but still, uh, we always need to have something that might inspire people. Uh, when some kids who are studying at, in art school see that uh, there's some quote-unquote African curators, there's some individuals who are opening some centers and losing whatever they <coughs> can, but doing it, and somebody who's uh, putting his money in that, it, it opened up. It reminds me of a, a survey that was made a couple of years ago, decades ago, in the States, in high schools. And uh, they would ask to those kids what they want to do when they're bigger. All the black people, all the black kids, wanted to be at the best uh, football player. I'm talking about the American football. The white kids wanted to be a doctor, that was the minimum, lawyers, etc., or president. But then, among the black kids, very few wanted to be a doctor. Or whatever. And the problem was not that they didn't want to, it's that they thought it was impossible. So there's a lot, when we're talking uh, sooner about the 90s, when we're talking about this now, I mean, those girls, uh, BC, Koyo, the Dwellout people, they opened their things with, with nothing, just because they felt the need to do something. And if we're all together, it's because everybody's playing in, in his own field. But that the work is being done, but uh, even Rome, you know, the story was not built in one day. Good. Koyo, je filme. And tu ne rates pas. I'm so sorry, I would have liked to stay a, a couple more hours, you know. And Koyo told me, you know, you're going to be talking about yourself for one hour. I said, cool. <laughs> <laughs> then I have to, a plane to catch, unfortunately. If there are no other questions or comments, we will call this a conversation series. Thank you very much for all of you for your interest. Thank you. Um, <laughs>